Um, yeah, this morning we're going to be considering uh, our third core value, which is character, and the importance of character for us as believers and for us as a church, a local church uh, here in the Fox Valley. Um, here's a prayer I want to really share with you guys. It's out of Matthew, um, and I'm going to read it through, and then we're just going to pray it back to God, because um, this is it. When we consider character, doesn't it come back to learning from Jesus? Are we called to be holy as He is holy? And as children of God, who are we to be like? We're little Christ's Christians. We are followers of Him. That's how our character should be. That's how we should look to this world. And I don't know about you guys, but it's hard, you know, because I know myself, I can't just suck it up and be like Jesus. It's got to be Him and His grace. So I love this passage. This is out of the Message Bible, which I don't care for too much. But the way they laid this passage out, it's really cool. Listen, it says, Are you tired, worn out, burn out on religion? Come to me, Jesus says. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Isn't that cool? Learn the unforced rhythms of grace and I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And Father, this morning it is our desire here to come to you and we thank you for this wonderful invitation to come lord as we are whether it's tired wiped out spent fallen short or i think sometimes as your kids we find ourselves so disappointed because we know you we know how good you are and how giving you are we have the promptings of your spirit and yet we fall short so often but that's why we're so thankful for your love and how you demonstrated your love for the cross and for the working of your Holy Spirit in our lives. And as we consider character this morning, we desire to be more like you, Father. And we want to allow you, Father, to uh, renew our minds, speak to our hearts this morning, change our hearts for your glory. And we commit this time to you in your name. Amen. Amen. I just want to chew on this passage just for a moment longer with you guys. As your pastor at Freedom Fellowship, I want you to be the freest people upon this planet and to be free to be exactly who God wants you to be. That is it. We're not trying to mold a bunch of little freedomites here. <laughs> what we're trying to do is our core value number one teach the Word of God, instruction, okay? That is part of our mission and our goal here that we're teaching in such a way that it leaves lasting change in our lives, okay? We desire to see that. Why? Because God gets the glory, okay? Do we trust Him enough in what He's declared? I hope so, because that's a big part of our character because we're either going to be learning from Him and His character or we're going to be learning from this world what we see around us. And we as his kids, the church, where do we set apart? We need to be a bride that is beautiful. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if we have another day. He can come back today. But don't you guys want to be a bride that's beautiful for him when he comes? I do. I do. So, we're going to consider some things today in light of character. If you really want to learn what a person really is like, you got to ask three questions. First of all, what does he or she laugh at? What do they get angry about? What makes them weep? Okay, do you laugh at dirty jokes or clean jokes? At people <laughs> or with people? Also, I got to tell you guys the joke my son just taught me. Knock knock. Cashew. Are you nuts? 
Isn't that great? I love it. I love it. I love it. You got a knock-knock book. Life's been good. Sunny had a birthday this week. She got a card with a bunch of knock-knock jokes in it from your eye. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Anyways, what makes, what, what makes a person angry? Is it because she or he isn't getting what they want? Okay, I'm angry about that. I'm not getting my way. Or is it injustice, sin, exploitation? How about weeping? I lost it all. The market crashed financially. Or is it over the moral? A moral loss. You see, our values don't define what we believe, but what we will do as a result of those beliefs. Are you really a Christian? Do you really believe? Well, there will be fruit of that belief. Okay, You will do something with that. So I want you guys to remember what you believe must determine how you behave. So our third core value is character. And I want you guys to catch this. Character. Honoring God as our character is transformed, resulting in genuine fruit. So character is a transforming journey. How many of you guys can say you're the same person that you were 10 years ago? No way. How about even a year ago? No way. We go through different seasons in life. I believe I'm going through a season unlike ever, <laughs> ever before. I feel like my character is changing every single day, sometimes multiple times in a day, because there's a lot of choices. There's a lot of things that I need to pray on and think through. And she's like, okay, God, you're going to use this. I have choices right now. Am I going to agree with you or am I going to do my own thing? <laughs> you know. So, story I want to share with you guys. It's a good one. Listen carefully. There was a county fair. Distinctively dressed Quaker offered a horse for sale. A non-Quaker farmer asked its price. And since the Quakers had this reputation for dealing fairly, he bought the horse without any hesitation. The farmer got home in the horse. He discovered that it was lazy and ill-tempered. So he took it back to the fair the next day. And there he confronted the Quaker. Thou hast no complaint against me, said the Quaker. Had thou asked me about the horse, I would have told thee truthfully the problems, but thou didst ask me. That's okay, replied the farmer. I don't want to take or have you take the horse back. I want to try to sell it to someone else. Can I borrow your coat and your hat for a while? You guys see... I think the worst PR for Jesus has been his followers or our, our wrong witness, our ugly example, our lame, loose lifestyle. Would you guys agree with me on that? The world's watching us. You see, there seems to be a shorter, no shortage of hearers, but a drought of doers. My personal struggle, it's not knowing, but it's doing are you happy with your character are you happy with the person that you've become do you feel stuck maybe with yourself do you desire to be someone other than yourself there is a way out god's given us an escape hatch comes down to surrender is it really that simple yeah we need to surrender to become someone else become your best self and only christ i want you guys to catch this only christ can free you through the power of change it is a gift of transformation which we struggle with as human beings because it is both human and divine at work. So to transform change into what? 
will transform your character is to reflect the very character of God. Be holy as I am holy. So character. Honoring God as our character is transformed, resulting in genuine fruit. You see, moral character is an evolution of individual moral qualities. So catch this. You can look on the screen. Character is the sum total of attributes and qualities that form an individual nature of a person, like integrity, courage, honesty, loyalty. Do you guys get that? You ask one of the Churchill boys, what does it mean to be a Churchill man? And they will tell you a Churchill man is courageous, trustworthy, helpful. And we can just keep it at those three. But let me tell you what, if I have sons that are going to be courageous for their God and they can be trustworthy and they are helpful in this world, let me tell you what, my God is going to be glorified through their lives. We need to instill those things in our lives to live on those things. Who are we? Imagine, guys, a pastor who preaches well but lacks integrity. Are you going to be able to receive when you hear him speak? I know what you're really like. How about a plumber? Does a great job fixing your whatever, but then he rips you off on the bill. <laughs> Good example, guys, is concrete. You got the cement and the sand and the water, and you eat them all together and stuff. But after a while, okay, if the portions are right, things are going to harden. And they're going to be in place, and it's hard to change once it's there. I want to share with you guys how the U.S. Air Force Academy speaks or defines character. We define character as the sum of those qualities of moral excellence that stimulates a person to do the right thing, which is manifested through the right and proper actions despite internal and external pressures to the contrary. I like that definition, guys. See, character may be manifested in the great moments, but it is made in the small ones. So to our young brothers and sisters, realize that you're making many small decisions today that will shape your character, whether good or bad. It's kind of like bricks <laughs> being set up. You're building that there, and that's where they're going to be. They're going to be in place in that wall. When Oscar Wilde, he was an Irish man, a playwright, novelist, uh, wrote poems. When he arrived to the U.S. back in 1882, the customs official asked him if he had anything to declare and he replied only my genius well 15 years later he was broke in prison and he reflected on his life of waste and excess he said i've been a spendthrift of my genius and i forgot that every little action of the common day makes or on makes character learn from this guy who messed up <laughs> every single day matters character is simply a long habit continued the measure of a man's real character is what he would do if no one would never find out you guys agree with me what do you guys do in secret? Men, think for a minute with me. If I promised you you would never get caught, what would you go do? If you never, ladies, what would you go do? Wait a minute, that shouldn't even be a question. You guys understand that? You see, Joseph, when he was being seduced, he wasn't trying to figure out a way. Hey, how can I get away with this that Potiphar won't find out, Right? No, he ran. He split. He was out of there. He got away 
from it. And that's what we need to purpose to do. How do I get away from it? If you ask some little Churchill boys what they would do if they ever saw a naked woman, they would both tell you, close my eyes and run. Okay, <laughs> They've been taught that. Close my eyes and run. So how diligently the Calvary officer keeps his saber clean and sharp. Every stain he rubs off with the greatest of care. If left just a little dirty, there's going to be corrosion. Okay, There's going to be pit metal. Remember, you are God's sword. You are His instrument. The great measure, in great measure, think about it. According to the purity and the purification of the instrument will be the success. So it is not great talents God blesses as much as Christ's likeness. Amen? So a holy minister is an awful weapon in the hand of God. A holy minister is an awful weapon in the hand of God. What is the greatest thing that you can do for the kingdom for your Lord? Your personal holiness. Okay? I love you guys. I want to serve you well. I want to serve my wife and my kids well. And in the front of my Bible, the first thing I have written is my personal holiness is the greatest thing that I can give to the church. I thank you for the privilege to serve, but I know it's not what I do, how well I preach. The biggest thing is going to be my personal holiness. And that applies to every single one of us, guys. And it's not easy, is it? This world gets dirty. <laughs> it's filthy. But despite that, we are still redeemed. We are regenerated. We are holy. And we need to walk in that. I want you guys to look here. Character builders are righteousness. Doing what's consistent with God's character. And where do we learn God's character? In His Word. That's how we get to know Him, what He is like. Okay, If we're not in His Word, we're not going to know. So that's why instruction is our number one core value. So we need to get into the Word. Secondly, guys, godliness. That is a life of respect and reverence for God. We've lost that in our society today. Faith. Trusting God. Love, that self-sacrifice for God and others. Patience, that is love that endures. Gentleness is a controlled spirit that hates sin, yet loves the sinner. Humility, being willing to serve someone. Integrity, being transparent. Okay, What you get here is what you get there. You guys understand? Nothing's in secret. I'm pretty much the same. Coming out of my house is not going to be too different. That's the way we should be. Also, guys, courage. It is remembering we've been equipped with the Spirit. And I think, saints, this is so important for us. He is with us. He's given us the Helper, His Holy Spirit. And we have the courage of God, therefore, to move forward. So this moves us to transformation here. Honoring God as our character is transformed, resulting in genuine fruit. Romans chapter 12. If you're not there in your Bibles, you could go there. This is a good passage for you to get familiar with. Okay. We have our brother Paul writing to the Romans. And he says, I beseech you, therefore, I'm begging you, <laughs> I'm begging you guys, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, there's a problem with a living sacrifice, isn't there? Because you can, we'll use the keyboard as an altar. <laughs> if we have something dead, we can put it on here. Okay, here's the sacrifice. It's not moving, it's not going anywhere, it's dead, it is there. But the problem with the living sacrifice is, hey, I need to go pee. <laughs> I'm going to get off this altar for a while. But God asks us to do what? Hey, be a living sacrifice all the time. 
And there's going to be things in this life, but these things that come up in life, are we being a living sacrifice in it to our God? You see, we're called to be a living sacrifice. Holy, okay? Whole, God has made us whole. You understand that? We had nothing. We were empty before. Christ comes into our life. He makes us whole, holy like Him. Acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. Don't you guys want that? I just don't want to get by in this life. God, what do you want? So to prove what is good and acceptable and perfect before Him. A believer's life, guys, is offered to God as a sacrifice. He'd lay down His life for us. We get to lay down our life. You want to follow me? Pick up your cross. You die to yourself. You're following me. You see, such an offering represents complete change in a lifestyle. Complete change. That's why it's hard sometimes when somebody comes to faith in Christ and they still are the same. You know, what's going on? Do you really believe? <laughs> if you really believe, things should be changing. Okay? Now, when he says here, do not be conformed, that's living according to the lifestyle of the present evil age. It must now be put aside. And it tells us to be transformed. That's in the present tense. It's a continual thing. Keep on being transformed. We should be changing. We shouldn't be the same we were a month ago, three months ago. Oh, I was on with the Lord a year ago because I was doing this and that and it was sweet and walking with the Lord and serving. You know? No. (laughs) We should always be being transformed. Okay? This word, metamorphosis, We all know what that is. Same Greek word here. Okay, a total change from the inside out. So relating to or involving a change in physical form, appearance, character. And how do we do that? Glad you asked. Whoops. It's by the renewing of your mind. Okay, the key to this change is the mind. The mind is the control center of one's attitudes, thoughts, feelings, and actions. This Saturday, gals, we're going to be hitting on that. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Okay? We're going to take a whole study on the mind, how we think. You guys understand that's where the battle takes place? It's in the mind. Do we have right thinking or not? That's why it's so good to get into the Word. Man, I'm really struggling. I had a couple days this week that were hard. I had to stand in truth. God, what are you saying? (laughs) What does your Word say? Because I'm wanting to think this, and I know it's not right. This is what you say. Does God change our hearts, guys? Yes. Okay. Can we change our hearts? No. Only God can do that. The new covenant, right? I'll take that heart of stone and I'll give you a heart of flesh, something that is alive, something that's pliable, that I can mold, that I can change. Will God change our heart without us asking, allowing Him? No. No. You guys need to understand this. When a person comes to Christ, does he force anyone to be his child? You must be born again. (laughs) I'm giving you my spirit. No. What does a person do? They repent. They turn to Jesus Christ and say, I need a Savior. I need you, Lord. Please forgive me. And we're told that in that faith, that true belief, because he knows the heart, when a heart turns in belief, they are born again of the Spirit of God and He comes and He changes the heart at that time. That's how it works, guys. We first need to change our mind. God, this is what You declare. That's why instruction is so important. That's why we take the Word so seriously here. God, what do You say? What have You instructed of us? Because I know You're right. Your ways are way higher than mine. You're much wiser than I am. This is what You say. And when we change our mind, God's going to come in and then change our hearts to do those things. And sometimes it's a prayer that we need to keep praying and something we need to keep changing our mind. I don't know about you guys, but am I the only one who struggles with some sin that's the same all the time? You know, isn't it hard? 
Like Satan gets to know us and he knows which buttons to push. You know, this one isn't working anymore. <laughs> but I know this one will work on landing. You know? <laughs> push, 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 push. <laughs> so it's one of those things, guys. We need to allow the Spirit of God to transform us. And that's going to come from our minds being changed. So he, 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 he takes our minds, okay? And, and they're, they need to, it keeps on being made new by the spiritual input of God's Word, of prayer, of Christian fellowship. Okay? And one's lifestyle keeps on being transformed. So the word transformed is only used four times in the New Testament. Two with Jesus on uh, the transfiguration, and then two for you and I. I love this quote by D.L. Moody. When you consider transformation as the innermost part of who you are, and he, he said this, he said the scriptures were not given for information, but for transformation. Okay? So if the word of God, we're told, effectively works in those who believe, it's living and powerful, it can discern the intents of our hearts and our thoughts. Okay, the word comes in. It's not just about knowing, it's about transformation. And really praying on those things like, hey, God, this is what you said. I want to be more like you, Jesus. I saw how you came alongside and loved this person that nobody else wanted to love. People were questioning you. Even your own disciples were questioning you. Let me be like you. Please help me to be like you. I want to be transformed in that way. You see, pressed cookies are conformed. You know, maybe you guys had a sweetheart yesterday, Valentine's Day. Made you a little heart cookie you know how does that happen you know cookie cutter that's the way you got to be isn't that what the world's doing to us this is what you need to have this is what you need to look like this is how you need to dress this is how you need to think you know they have an agenda there i've lived a short time but if you step back satan's very good at what he does and there's an agenda the world's conforming more and more all the time into whatever the God of this age wants. But we're called as Christians to be set apart, not to be conformed, but what? Transformed. Like an ugly little wormy thing into a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> okay, You guys get it? That's what God does. That's the difference. I love how the J.B. Phillips translation uh puts this verse it says don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold but let god remake you so that your whole attitude of mind is changed your whole attitude sometimes it's easy well i can give you this part lord (laughs) but this one over here i'm not ready to let go i'm not ready to change my mind about that We started off, and I told you guys the key was what? Surrender. Absolute surrender. All of it. Why ain't I growing? Why am I still struggling? Why is it so hard to transform the sanctification process? What's going on? Brothers and sisters, it is so much easier when you just give it up. (laughs) You just surrender. I trust you, God. It may be painful, It may not be what I want, but I'm just surrendering it because, Father, you know best. Freedom Fellowship, the world is looking at our lives to see a difference. Are they seeing one? Dare to be different, guys. Dare to be different. In the Spirit of God that transforms our life, He does it by the renewing of our minds. So be released from the control of this world that's around you and come to know what God has in mind for you. And it is good. It is good. You see, it's living a life that is committed to excellence. It's living a life above the level of mediocrity. It's living on shackled lives. It's living unchained. God wants you to be freed. His yoke is easy, guys. He says, come with me. Follow me. Let's labor together. (laughs) He's got it. What do we really got to do? We just got to hang with him. 
And what happens when you hang with people? You become like them. There were some little catchphrases that I couldn't stand that Sonny would say all the time when we first got married. I was like, why do you actually say that all the time? That was one of them, by the way. (laughs) You know what? I say those same things now. You guys know what I'm talking about? You become like the people you hang out with. Just hang with Jesus. Your character is going to change. Okay? It just happens. You know, I've even seen some older couples, they're matching, you know, they're wearing matching jumpsuits, you know? (laughs) But the world wants to see Jesus. And that's why character transformation is so important. Are you giggling because you guys do that? (laughs) Time for confession? (laughs) So we are transformed, guys. Do you know the only reason we're here instead of heaven? Because we're being transformed. God's changing us. So when we come to Jesus with our lives, okay, um, He transforms them. We come to the cross confessing our inadequacy. We go away claiming His adequacy. So nothing in my hand I bring. Only to the cross I cling. That is it, guys. So how long does it take to become a Christian? How long does it take to become a Christian? It's in a moment. Justified. Just as if you never sinned. The second you put your faith, you truly believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that He died on that cross and rose again, that you would be forgiven. You are saved. Just like that. It's just a belief thing. And over a lifetime... There's sanctification. Okay? Some of you old dudes, have you arrived yet? (laughs) It's a process, huh? You know, I'll be honest with you guys. I've walked with the Lord for a couple decades now. I feel like I'm farther away than I've ever been before, to be honest with you guys. I feel dirtier than I've ever felt before. But I also feel holier than I ever have before. It's the closer I get to Jesus, the more light there is, the more I see that I'm not adequate. <laughs> how far I've fallen short, but I see how good He is and who He is and who I am in Him. He is our righteousness, guys. Our holiness comes from Him. It's a lifelong battle. I'll be honest. Is sanctification fun for anybody? No. I've had a rough year. And a big part of it, there's been a lot of sanctifying that God's doing in my heart, in my life. It's changed my character a lot. Do I like going through stuff? No way. (laughs) Is God using it? You betcha. Sanctification's not easy. It's interesting if we think about the God of miracles. He isn't into instant discipleship. Hey, you're saved. Here you go. It's all together. Nope. You see, heaven never hangs a sign overnight. Transformations inquire within. Okay? It's a lifelong thing. God doesn't do the overnight makeovers, but is a lifetime of transformation. And it's really on us how fast that transformation is going to happen. And again, the key is what? Surrender. Because there may be things that you want to hold on to because this is what my flesh wants. <laughs> it's just going to stunt your growth. But if you just surrender, all right, God, all right, God, we can grow as fast as we want. I think it's sad when we have saints who've been in the Lord for a while, maybe they're teens now, or should be adults by now, and they're still wearing diapers. They haven't grown up. They believe in Jesus, they love Him. And never deny them. But they haven't surrendered. They haven't given up. They're still doing their thing their way. I want you guys to take a look at 2 Corinthians 3.18 with me here. It says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as the Spirit 
of the Lord. So the Spirit of the Lord is transforming us from glory to glory. You guys get this. You see, being transformed into the same image, it it has been said that when people of God look into the Word of God and see the glory of God and the Spirit of God transforms them to be like the Son of God. From glory to glory. Isn't that beautiful? God doesn't give up on us. You're saved. Just go. Try really, really hard. No. Come to me. Let's do this together. Let's yoke up together. Let's work together. From glory to glory. From salvation in that moment to the struggle of sanctification through this life, to glorification. The day He comes to take us home or we die and go be with Him. That's the good part. That's going to be glorifying. Okay? From glory to glory to be glorified. I can't wait. You see, each day, you can have your own personal transfiguration as you worship the Lord and as you yield to His Spirit. It's really that simple. Some say we should be invisible in ministry. But Paul says they should see you. See your reflection. See Jesus' reflection in you. Maybe that's why we don't see any portrait of Jesus. There's none that exists. We don't know what He looked like. Augustus Caesar we know, and he lived before Christ because God wants to be seen in you. A reflection of Jesus in your lives. You are the salt and the light of this world, guys. Let them see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, our quest is to have God's character formed in us so that His passions might burn in us. A passion transformation. Jot down Galatians 5.24. It tells us this. And those who are Christ have been crucified with its, or to the flesh with its passions and desires. So if you're a Christian, we need to crucify those passions those desires. And this is speaking about the genuine fruit. Okay? This is what's going to take place when we are not being conformed, but being transformed. We will begin to bear fruit as we worship and yield. Worship and yield. Fruit will start to come. We honor God with our character when our character is being transformed, and then it results in genuine fruit. Remember, fruit bearing is not service. Oh, look at what I do, 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 do. whoop de doo <laughs> What matters is our hearts. Great if you're doing, but why are you doing it? You may be glorified, Father. I'm doing this unto you. You see, these are virtues, guys, that characterize the Christian life. If we are filled with the Spirit, we will exhibit the fruits of the Spirit. But again, that takes time, doesn't it? It takes time. It's not like, fruit, look at it all. You know? It takes a little bit of time to grow, doesn't it? And then for the fruit to come. And sometimes we want that. Lord, I've been doing it. I've been doing what you're asking. I'm praying. Nothing's happening. Wait. Be patient. Don't grow weary in doing good for in due season you will reap a harvest. You see, many Christians, they stop at crucify the passions and desires part which would make us great Christian Buddhists. Buddhism teaches that the ultimate end is the elimination of 
all desire. So it's to exist without desire. Nirvana, right? Finally arriving to the elimination of all desire and craving. You see, Buddhism is an eightfold path, which is a system to free Buddhists from desiring anything. But God isn't trying to restrain our passions, but to refocus them. It is only death to those passions and desires that have been fueled by a heart absent from God. The goal of the Christian journey, our walks with the Lord, cannot be to eliminate desire and passion because God has made us in His image and His likeness. So a part of reflecting God's heart is designed to be passionate in living. Because Christ has a passion, doesn't He? A Christ-likeness, passion for the lost, passion for mission work, passion for His gifts. You see, God doesn't want to eliminate your desires and passions just to overwhelm you with new ones. That's what He wants to do. So God, He wants to give you godly ones. He wants to give you godlike ones. Because we can be very passionate about things of this life. But if we're taking the time to seek Him, He's going to give us new passions. Okay? A few people heard that I'm going out of town this week. I'm getting some time to go to a conference, seek the Lord and pray. They were kind of scared because they know every time I go away, I come back very passionate about some other things and there's stuff to do. <laughs> but that's just life, guys. If we're really seeking Him, and <laughs> He's going to give us new desires. The more you get to know your dad's heart, your heart's going to begin to beat with His. And you're going to desire to step into those things and be a part and be passionate about those things. I mean, look at our fellowship. We're all very different. And there are godly passions as God's given different brothers and sisters. I don't know if I could do that. That's because God's given them a new passion. And that's something that God put in their heart to do. And that's awesome. And we want to encourage them in that. We want to build them up in that. But sometimes we get passionate about the things of this world. There's things definitely to enjoy in this life, guys. He's given us a lot to enjoy. But how much of it's really of the Father's heart? You know, it gets fun when we start doing the things that are in His heart. You see, the furnace of our passion is our character. Evil character burns hot with destructive passions. The character of God ignites passion for what is good and what is true. So our quest is to have God's character formed in us so that His passion might burn in us. This world, my brothers and sisters, needs Christian men who cannot be bought. This world needs Christian businessmen who, whose word is their bond. This world needs Christian individuals who put their character above wealth. This world needs Christian young men and women to risk and to take chances. This world needs Christian men and women who are larger than than their vocations. This world needs Christian women who will not lose their individuality in their marriage. This world needs Christians who will be honest in the small things as well as the great things. This world needs Christian families who are not consumed with their own selfish desires. This world needs Christian teens who will not say, everybody else is doing it. Have you guys heard that one before? Pray for our young kids. We need Christians who are dating that will make no compromise for wrong. We need Christians in this world 
Christian students, they're not ashamed to stand up for the truth, even if it's unpopular. This world needs genuine fruit in God being honored. I don't see a lot of genuine fruit in God being honored in the age that I'm living. You see, guys, the world needs you. It needs you, Christian, to see the character, true character, godly character in your life daily. Put it on display daily. You see, these are not superficial character adjustments that happen overnight. You guys ever meet a Christian like that? <laughs> It's got to be real. And these involve reshaping. A reshaping in the innermost dispositions of our hearts, which a lifelong process of sanctification by the Holy Spirit. It's the only way it's going to come, guys. It is a process. We don't give up, we finish well, and we encourage each other. We band together along the way. You see, if God, the Holy Spirit, produces spiritual fruit in measure beyond mere human ability, we have a big God. You see, fruit always has the same nature of the tree. An apple tree is not going to make oranges. Just not going to happen. The fruit, mu- the fruit must correspond with the root. That's why we're going through our foundational things here. What are our core values at Freedom Fellowship? You know, hey, we stand upon the Word of God. We take His Word seriously. We know how important instruction is. Because everything's going to come from that. We're going to serve well. We're going to have character that glorifies God. We will be generous with what He's given us. And we're going to fellowship well. <laughs> you see, guys... A beautiful fruit is a sign of a healthy tree. It all comes back to our character. Character, honoring God as our character is transformed, resulting in genuine fruit. Freedom Fellowship, I see Jesus in you. More and more. More and more. Some people might come in and they may know us. But you don't know. I've seen so-and-so do this. And they said, you should have heard the joke they told, you know. Yeah, you should have saw us before. Where we were. Especially before Jesus. You guys get it? There is good fruit. There is growth taking place. And I want to encourage you guys in that. So allow Him to continue to transform you day by day. Surrender. Every day. Lord, what do you want? You see, we are a work in progress. We are His work in progress. We are His poem. He keeps adding stanzas. Our lives are His pottery Water, hands, pressure, molded, being reshaped. Our lives are His painting, one stroke at a time. I just want to see the finished product. I like Bob Ross. You guys know Bob Ross? Fro Man, PBS, long time ago. Yeah, yeah. The Happiness of Painting or The Joy of Painting. What was the show called? I don't know. All I know from him is that trees can cover a multitude of sin. Anyways, it's so cool because as he would have this canvas, he'd begin to paint big globs here and this there. What the heck are you doing, Bob? (laughs) What are you painting? And then he'd start adding little things here. Another stroke there, and the picture would just start to come together beautifully. Whoa! You know, this is awesome. 
This one little stroke just made a huge difference. And that's what God's doing in our lives, guys. Right now you might be in a place, what in the heck is this? <laughs> My life is a mess? God, are you going to make something of this? Because it is, I don't know. <laughs> but you are God's workmanship. He's not done with you. He is the author and the finisher of your faith, and He is faithful to complete the work He's begun in you. Amen? Father, we thank You so much for Your Holy Spirit that is at work in us. And again, we know that You know best. All we can do is surrender. All we can do is say yes. I pray that You'd help us to worship You well, Father, and yield quickly as You lead us. Father, we want to bring you glory and honor. You called us to be salt and light. Lord, we need, we need your help. This world needs to see you. And they're not going to pick up your word and read for themselves. For many of them, the only Bible they're ever going to read is our lives. I pray for grace for my brothers and sisters, for myself, that you'd help us to live well, that we would keep on as you are transforming us to be more like you. And I pray that you'd, as a church family, show us, show us all how we can encourage each other and build each other up to do so. For your glory, we pray. Amen.